Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into how to set up RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi from start to finish. Wherever you're new to retro gaming or just looking to get your Pi set up for some, for some classic games, I've got you covered. Let's get started. Okay, so the first step is you need to head over to the Raspberry Pi website. All you need to do is type in RetroPie. And as you can see, here it is, RetroPie Gaming on the Raspberry Pi. Go to download, here choose the one for Raspberry Pi you have, I have the Raspberry Pi 3 here, so I'm going to choose this one. It's going to download it now. Now you also need another application called Balina Etcher. Just type in Balina Etcher. Here click on the first link, download Etcher. Here, you want to download for Windows if you're using a Windows machine. If you're using Mac OS, you would download it here. So I'm going to be using Windows, so I'm going to download here. Now I'm going to wait for both of them to download, and I'm going to cut the recording to when it's done. Okay, so now we have both of the software downloaded. First of all, we need to open up Balena Etcher. Once you open it, you uh, you will go into this screen. Either you have to install it if you chose the installer, or if you chose the portable version, you just go into this menu. Now here you need to press uh, flash from file. Mine is on my desktop. I have to go here. RetroPie. Now here you can select your target. Make sure you choose a USB drive. As you can see, I only have this one. It's a, it's a USB drive, but it's actually a, an SD card adapter. If I go here, this is my main drive. You you do not want to flash this. You want to flash this one, the USB. So double check your USB. As you can see here, it will show you the drive letter. If I open up File Explorer, this PC, you see the drive letters here. This is a new volume. This has letter D in it. And as you can see here, this also has a letter D in it. So that means it's definitely this drive. Select here. Uh, for some reason, if, if you don't see this, you might uh, find it here, or if you have a large capacity, it, it, it'll just tell you it's a large drive, you sure you want to do that. If that actually is your drive, then just go ahead, there's no problem. Select and flash. Just make, just make uh, sure that you have backed up all of your data, if you have any, because this process will uh, wipe your uh, SD card. After we finish flashing, I'll show you what you need to do to get RetroPie booted. Okay, so now that we have flashed our SD card, it will it will show up with flash completed, and now you need to get the Pi ready. First of all, you need to get the Raspberry Pi itself. You need a power supply, which is enough for the Pi. I would recommend 5 volts at 2 amps. You also need the SD card you just flashed. You you need a controller. I'm going to use, I'm going to be using a PS5 DualSense controller connected via USB port, but you can use uh, other options. You will need a monitor. Uh, I would suggest the one that just natively plugs in via HDMI, although if you had an older Pi, you could use something like a, a, a CRT monitor, which would be kind of cool if you had one. Also, not uh, necessary, but it's very recommended that you have an internet connection. This will make transferring files, so games, uh, BIOSes, much easier which, uh, over the network than just constantly having to plug in a USB. Also, you will need it for other things I'm going to show you later, so make sure you have that. Also, I would recommend you having a cooler on your Pi because it is going to be, it is going to be running pretty warm with the software and uh, games push the Pi at its limit. So having a cooler will definitely help you out in the long run. Now, you're going to plug in the SD card to your Raspberry Pi and just boot it up, connect your display. That's everything you need to do and you'll be booted into the setup. Okay, so now that I have set up my Pi, I'll plug in my controller. Note here that the PS5 controller will not work uh, here. I did try it with a USB cable and I got nothing. So I have to use a PS4 controller for now. But with holding the A, here is my X. Now map the controllers. This is pretty standard, even on other um, emulation station based operating system. So A, B, X, Y left, right, right, left thumb, right thumb, analog, up, down, left, right, here on the right stick, hotkey is my PlayStation button or my Xbox button, now press A, 
and soon enough after it's uh, registered all of the controls it should boot us up to the regular Pi interface so here we are this is the retro Pi currently there is nothing on here because we have no games here whatsoever but I do want to show you a few things before we add the games so to go into this menu you need just sorry to press uh, your start key so in my case it is options you press that then you have all of your settings if you um, did a button wrong for example you want to go back and change it just configure input sorry go to configure input yes and here plug in and you do your controller again so if you are um, adding more than one controller for example you want to play the two player game so where you would uh, remap the other controller but just press A on the other one, not on this one I'm going to, I, as you can see here I did the button wrong, for example the right thumb is wrong here I will go up as you can see here just complete the list all the way through then we can, we can go back and uh, change it Go here. I'm gonna skip it. Hot key. Now, as you can see, I messed some in inputs up. So I'm gonna go back in the list. So here, my right thumb should not be an axis. I'm gonna press A here, and I'm gonna map my right thumb here. Now my left analog. I'm gonna map that again. So if you mess something up, just don't worry. You you can do this. You can go back on the list here to go left here you need to go right here now you want to go up here you're gonna go down you're going to left here you, it's, it's not even defined so I'm gonna go right and now A this is how you, how would you map your controllers Press A on configuration. Go on show IP, or uh, if if you don't have an Ethernet cable, you go to Wi-Fi, and then you'll set it up there. I'm gonna go to show IP. Press A, and here you should see the IP pretty soon. Yeah, you you have to wait a little bit. As you can see. Here I have my IP 192.168.1.86 so I need to remember this when I go into the PC but this is IP, this is the number you need to remember now I'll switch over to the screen recording where I can show you the games ok so now that we are back onto the PC we need to go into our file explorer here I'm gonna go to network and here I'm gonna type in the IP that we found earlier so in this case mine is 192.168.1.86 you want to press enter here and this will take you to the if if this doesn't work you can try adding two backslashes in front like this do that Sorry. Now, should, you should be taken to the RetroPy menu. This should work. If you're still not getting the screen, try two backslashes and then just RetroPy all caps. This is the default host name. Okay, here we go. So, because my Raspberry Pi was set up with different IPs before, it just didn't show up. So you, you can uh, do backslash backslash RetroPie all caps, and then you'll be sent into the menu. Here there are four folders: BIOS, Config, ROM, and Splash Screens. All of these are pretty self-explanatory. In the BIOS, you can add BIOS for different systems. I will make a separate video on how to do all of the BIOSes on one go, so you don't have to think about it ever again. 
there are your, your, your configs for different systems, your ROMs and your splash screens. Most of the time you're going to be spending on the ROMs. This is the games folder basically. So for every system here, you, here's where you add your games. So, as you can see, I have uh, the Atari systems here, I have the Game Boys here, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. I'll also link down the RetroPie, for, uh, the RetroPie guide, which will give inf information for all of these systems. I'm going to be focusing on the, uh, the SNES, uh, the NES, uh, some Game Boy Advance, and the Sega Mega Drive. So, we're going to be copying over those games. Now, to make it easy, you want to open up another File Explorer window. You want to drag them like this, so you can make it easy. I will, I will go to my games path. Personally, it's on my Truna server. And here, I'm going to copy some, SN some NES games. Uh, where you get these files, uh, I can't disclose that, but if you do a Google search, you'll be able to find that. Here, I'm going to copy some games, so I'm going to go to M. Uh, what game should we copy? Let's find su uh, the Super Mario games, why not? I have the Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to copy to the folder. These have, these have to be, to be uh, named in a specific way so that uh, you can get the correct metadata. So NES, now SNES. Here I'm going to go to uh, Mega Man. Just copy all of the Mega Man games. Go into the SNES folder, very important. Copy them here. We're going to do some Game Boy Advance titles as well. I go to Game Boy Advance here. I'll cop I'll copy some uh, some Pokemon games onto the Game Boy Advance folder. This is as simple as dragging and dropping. There is no science here. If you want to use um, if you want to play more advanced system, for example, if you want to do arcade, I will make more videos on that. But you can also do that if you want. And there are also extra systems you can get on the RetroPie, but I'll also be covering that in the other video because this one will get way too long. And also, let's copy some uh, some Sega Saturn game. No, no, sorry, some Master System. Why not? I have to find Master System here. Get some games and just paste them in. Now all everything you have is ready to go. We're going to switch back to the Raspberry Pi where we need to refresh our game list so the games can show up. So now that the files are transferred, you can see no systems here show up. That's because we need to refresh the game list in order for them to show up. So here you need to press your start button, go to quit, then restart emulation station, not the system, the emulation station. Press uh, A, A again. Here is going to restart and it's going to load up the systems. The more system you have, the more the longer it will take. And now, as you can see, our system here are showing up. So I have NES games. Uh, Sega Master System, Game Boy Advance, and Super Nintendo here. Now, if I go into the folders, as you can see, the games look like this, and it's um, not the best interface. So, to fix this, press Start, Scraper, Scrape from, I, I, I leave this with the Games DB. Now, here I'll filter all games because none of my games are scripted. Here, if you want to. Um, to, for example, leave out a system, you can leave it here, or if a system is not included for some reason, you would include it here. And now I'm going to go and start. So now it's going to be searching for the games, and, and I'm going to be deciding which, uh, which scrape I want. So I'm only going to be showing you the first one here. As you can see, there are two versions here. There is this one and this one. This one, as you can see, is a Japanese version. Well, this one is the uh, USA version. I'm gonna leave it to the USA version because uh, that's uh, because I speak English and I want my games to be in English. But if you want the Japanese games, you would also do that. 
You can see the game also change here from Pocket Monsters to Pokemon. That's because different regions have different names for their uh, games. As you can see again, here there are uh, two games with uh, similar names, VR and just regular Fire Red. This one is Fire Red, so I'm gonna press A here. And this is where all of the games would be scraped. I'm gonna cut this now and I should go over to the next thing. Okay, so now we have finished scraping the games and if I go over to them, as you can see, my games are properly scraped now. You need to know on getting a retro pie on your Raspberry Pi. If you have any questions, everything, everything, I will answer it. Uh, you can message me on my Instagram, I have linked in, the, in my channel. If you have something to say about the video, message me in the comments. But if you have a question or anything, just go to my Instagram, it's just at Harder Unleashed, and you can message me there. Hope you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe because it helps me out a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next RetroPie tutorial.